MMA Fighting presents Timeline, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal. September 11th, 2010, Shark Fights 13, Jardine versus Prangley, Amarillo, Texas. With 25 fights already under his belt, with the majority being at the lightweight limit, Masvidal moves up in weight to face elite welterweight striker Paul Daly. Daly wins a very competitive decision and moves Masvidal record to 20 victories and six defeats. March 5th, 2011, Strike Force, Feijal versus Henderson, Columbus, Ohio. The 26 fight veteran makes his televised Strike Force debut opposite the undefeated 11 0 Billy Evangelista. Masvidal wins by decision. Obviously, I want to I want to put on great shows. You know, these guys always put on great shows, and I want to put a great show on. But um, I, naturally, I'm a counterfighter, and if Billy was coming forward, I was just gonna look the counterfight. You know, so uh, I wish I could have got, you know, the the the, cheer, the fans cheering and doing backflips, but it didn't happen this time. Next time, you know. No, I wasn't surprised. Um, I I, I always go into a fight like wanting a, a knockout, but if I don't see an opening, I won't go crazy. You know, I, I hit Billy with some good shots, and he recovered right away, so I wasn't gonna overextend myself or get caught in any silly things, you know? So I, I just, I don't care. Wins a win for me, you know? I just want to keep winning, building my wins up. I know Billy had like uh, six or seven straight wins in strike force, so he's definitely got to be up there. Um, If I can't fight for the title, the next toughest guy out there, I'd like to fight him and kick his butt, you know? That's all I want to do, man. Just keep fighting, man. Whoever it be next. June 18th, 2011, strike force. Overeem versus Verdum, Dallas, Texas. Masvidal returns to the Strike Force hexagon to face former Atlantic Sea lightweight champion KJ Nunes. You know, you made your Strike Force debut in, in March. Uh, you had that dominant win over uh, Billy Evangelista, but there were some boos in the crowd and there were some people who criticized you for maybe going the safe route. What did you think of your performance and of the criticism you received afterwards? Oh, uh, well, a lot of people, man, the people booing in the crowd never really care because Half of them are drunk. They just want to see sock them, rock them robots, you know, and that's not me. You know, I never done that. I put out guys in the first round, but that's because I created openings and uh, I heard them and I followed up on it. I'm not a guy that's going to get hit just to give a hit, you know. I'm going to hit you and I'm going to move and I'm going to move my head, you know. Some people don't like it. Some people love it, you know. I got just uh, the interview before. I just did an interview right now and they were telling me, it's like, hey, that last fight was really close and you're telling me I blew the guy away. So it's like, you know, everybody, that's their opinion. I can't get mad, you know, and uh, hopefully the fight on Saturday, they like it more, man. He told us that he has a hard time not looking past you because he really wants to fight for the title. Are you in the same position? Are, are, are you kind of starting to think about Gilbert because maybe a win over him will, will lead to a title shot? Mm, man, I, of course I want that gold wrapped around my waist. That means a lot more money, but uh, if Cage is looking past me, man, he's going to wake up with a tube in his mouth getting rushed to the hospital, you know? So uh, he, he could do whatever he wants. I'm looking at him and only him after him. I don't know if I'm going to fight for the title. I, I don't know if I'm going to fight Justin Wilcox. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, I wouldn't want to fight Jay-Z, but, you know, wh whoever it be next, man, I'm, I'm ready for it, you know? So I'm not looking past KJ. I'm just, I want to destroy him, you know? Masvidal wins by unanimous decision. Post-fight at Strike Force in Dallas with a very happy Jorge Masvidal who defeated KJ Nunes tonight. And uh, Jorge, congratulations on the big win. A lot of people were saying this was one of your best performances of your career. Would you agree? Uh, I, I definitely think it's good. Um, Everybody likes that. Like, I, I don't know if I was you that I told earlier, or I forgot who, that rock him, sock him, you know, hit the guy, get hit, you know, and um, that's why people liked it, because uh, KJ, though, he, he got it from the kick, he was putting pressure on me. He wasn't hitting me, but he was putting good pressure, so I know people like that, but it's, uh, I thought my Billy Evangelista fight was a real good fight, you know, Billy's real tough, he kept coming forward the whole time, I didn't take no hits, no damage, and, and that's what I think it is, as close as you can to perfection. Don't give him no takedowns, don't get punched in the face and score, you know, and that's what I think makes a good fight, not you get hit, you come back, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's funny how it works in MMA because a lot of people, as we talked in the pre-fight interview, were criticizing you for that performance, and they loved this performance because it was Rock'em Sock'em, and I think a lot of people are now... Though I didn't get hit just this. Right. It wasn't Rock'em Sock'em, you know? It was close to the Rock'em Sock'em, you know? But still, I was... Uh, at the, the way that I picture a fight is is like a, like a pretty thing, you know? You hit, you move, you move, you think, you know? When the guy does this, you do that, and if he does that, you do this, you know? And that's how I think a fight's pretty, you know? Some guys just want to see two guys punching, you know what I'm saying? Just punching each other in the head so one of them drops and that's cool and all, but that's that's not how I was raised to fight and that's not what I think a, a, a long lasting career in, in any sport of combat will, will will take you to the higher levels, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel as though now you have, uh, you know, it's funny because I remember talking to you right after 
Amada submitted you, and you were sort of on the receiving end of this this, this very famous submission. Now you're on this role in Strike Force. You're fighting a, 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 in a bigger promotion, um, and it feels as though now you're really starting to get a lot of respect. You've been around this sport for a long time. Do you feel as though you have a lot of momentum now going into this fight? Yeah, I, I got a lot of momentum. Like, like you said, I've been around for a while. You know, I just had some ups and downs. You might I'm gonna kick your ass one day. <laughs> no hard feelings. I like the guy. He's a cool guy, man. But I, I gotta get I gotta get that win back one of these days. Amada, man, I'm, I'm gonna make it happen, man. Uh, one of these days I gotta get Amada back. But you still think about that? Of course, man. I think really, if you look at my record, I got two legitimate losses. It's Amada and this other guy uh, that they beat me young in my career. The rest of them, I think I won them, and I just had unfair decisions, you know. But um. That's why I think a lot of times people overrate me. They look at my record, they see six losses, you know, but it's really two losses, man. And, and I don't fought some tough guys and beat them up, you know. Gilbert won't be no different. Another tough guy that I'm going to beat up. Masvidal would be awarded a shot at the lightweight title, but would go on to lose to the champ, Gilbert Melendez, by decision. Jorge Masvidal would get back to his winning ways by defeating Justin Wilcox at Strike Force Rockhold versus Kennedy in Portland, Oregon. April 20th, 2013, UFC on Fox 7, Henderson vs. Melendez, San Jose, California. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal makes his UFC debut at lightweight against lanky striker Tim Means. Masvidal wins by decision. Debut, Jorge, congratulations on picking up your first UFC fight. A tough, gritty fight, a lot of bleeding. How you feel afterwards? I feel great, man. Um, Tim Means is way tougher than I expected, and uh, I'm just glad to get my victory, get the jitters out the way, get that, uh, I don't know, what, the, what is it they call it, the UFC uh, bug or whatever? The octagon jitters. The octagon jitters, um, got them out the way, and um, I like it, man. This is going to be my home for a long time. Okay, final thing, for a guy who's been in this sport for 10 years, you fought almost everywhere, even some backyard fights with Kimbo. What's it like? Not to say that you're a UFC guy, that you want to fight inside the octagon. Oh, it's awesome. I'm fighting everywhere. I'm, I'm a veteran of the sport, man. I'm young, you know, but I, I've been everywhere and um, I love it, man. I love it here. You know, I'm going to be able to put four or five fights a year easy, you know, feed my family. So I'm ready to go, man. How are we celebrating? McDonald's? What are we doing? Brownie? Taco Bell? What are we getting? I'm in the West Coast. So I'm going to try some West Coast burgers in and out or Jack in the Box, something like that, you know? July 27th, 2013, UFC on Fox 8, Johnson versus Moraga, Seattle, Washington. Masvidal is matched up against tough winner Michael Chiesa at lightweight. Um, Michael, very complimentary of you. He said that you're a guy that he watched for many years as he was climbing the ranks. You not so complimentary of him. You called him a watered down version of Hoist Gracie. You didn't seem to think like he's on your level. Is that accurate? It, it's not that he's not, it just, I don't like the way he acted towards a teammate of mine that he fought in this, uh, the way he carried himself, so it's just whatever to me, you know what I'm saying? I just, I don't like the dude, you know what I'm saying? What? You don't want to be on Sportsman, like, that's cool, you know? Try that with me, you know what I'm saying? So, so you're going to go in there and try to get payback for your buddy? I'm not going to try. You will? You know what I'm going to do, man. <laughs> huh? This is a very big deal for him, this fight, because he's from this area, and he's been dreaming about fighting in Key Arena. Do you like being the kind of enemy, going oh, into enemy I'm under? Do you like that? Why? I, Color me flattered. I love it, man. I come in here and just do my job. And um, if I get the booze, I love it. If I get the ahs and oohs, it's cool too. But, you know, the booze is a special place in my heart, man. Why? Why, why do you like that? I don't know. I just like the booze, you know, just as much as I like the oohs and ahs, you know? I'd rather actually the booze. So then I, after the fight, I don't got to worry about, like, uh, people, like, taking pictures now. And they're just like, oh, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, All right, whatever. Throw things at you. Yeah, throw things. Spit on you. Yeah, it's the, the usual, you know? He post fight at UFC on Fox 8 alongside Jorge Masvidal, who just submitted Michael Chiesa with one second remaining in the second round. And Jorge, congratulations on a win. Early on, he dropped you. It looked like things might get dicey. How did you regroup? Uh, that just pissed me off, man. I was so mad when, uh, when I realized what happened when I was on my butt on the single leg. I was like, oh man, you're in for a world of trouble if I get out of here. And I was just saying to myself, if he doesn't put me to sleep right here, right now, I'm going to get him. And uh, I got him. How does this do for Jorge Masvidal? Where does this put you in the division? Um, hopefully it puts me somewhere in the division, man. Give me some top five guys. These guys are overrated and I'm here to, to bring the truth to the light. You know what I'm saying? Who's overrated? All of them. <laughs> However, Masvidal would suffer his first UFC defeat after being out-wrestled in a decision loss to top prospect Rustam Habilov at UFC Fight Night 31, Kennedy vs. Natal. April 19th, 2014, UFC on Fox 11, for Doom vs. Brown, Orlando, Florida. Masvidal is matched up against durable wrestler Pat Healy. 
Jorge Masvidal wins by unanimous decision. Um, I got to give a big shout out to my wrestling coach, Cammy Barcini, that uh, every day is just pushing me. And um, I got great sparring partners on Nathan Coy and Kobe Covington. They're both from Oregon. They both wrestle for the University of Oregon. And those guys kick my ass every day. So me getting wrestled up against the fence is just a part of the job. It's just, I was happy to be there. I could feel them wearing out. And uh, I know my, my corner was screaming for me to get out of the cage, but I could feel him getting weaker as these changes were happening, you know. Gamebred would follow this with a decision victory over Darren Cruikshank at UFC on Fox 12, Lawler versus Brown. And at UFC 178, Johnson versus Cariasso, Masvidal would defeat James Kraus by decision to extend his win streak to three. Um, I'm going to In-N-Out Burger right now. <laughs> then I'm going to go hit up a buffet, but In-N-Out is the, the first thing I'm going to go do right now. What, what's, your, what's your burger you get there? I got to get the biggest one, though. The double... Four by four. Yeah, four by four. Yeah. Whatever I get my hands on, the biggest <laughs> burger. I'm gonna have, I already I already got the food coming. I got like three number ones coming with a milkshake. I, I'm going to be I'm gonna be like at 200 for the night. So. April 4th, UFC Fight Night 63. Mendez versus Lamas, Fairfax, Virginia. Masvidal is matched up against top-ranked contender Raging Al Iaquinta. In one of the most controversial decisions of the year, Iaquinta wins a split decision despite receiving 30-27 from one judge. And according to MMADecisions.com, 12 of 14 media members had Masvidal winning the fight, with six of them giving every round to Gamebred. More importantly, this would be Masvidal's last fight at 155 pounds. July 12, 2015, the Ultimate Fighter 21 finale, Las Vegas, Nevada. After accumulating a 5-1 record outside of the UFC and two consecutive decision victories on the reality show, The Ultimate Fighter, Kamaru Usman makes his official UFC debut against Hader Hassan in the show finale. Obviously, you know, people were um, watching. If you watch The Ultimate Fighter, you know that a lot of people on your team did not want you to be the one to represent you guys in the last fight. So how have you processed that? What kind of adjustments have you made? You know, since the show in preparation, we all know uh, that Hyder's got that big, uh, that big punching power. So what adjustments have you made? And, and sort of what are you feeling knowing that you weren't the guy that everybody necessarily wanted? Uh, at the end of the day, just kind of assessing it, um, Initially, it's a bit hard to, to take in, but I mean, all through life, my dad's always taught me people are going to doubt you people or some people aren't going to believe in you. It's how you believe in yourself. And I've proven it going out. I believe in myself and I, in every stage of my career, whether it's from wrestling to get into this point, I believe in myself and I go out there and I give it my all. And that's brought me this far. And as far as punching power, damn near everybody has punching power. If you look at the welterweight division, everybody has punching power. That means absolutely nothing. I've been hit before in our sparring session and practice. Each and every one is a pay-per-view event. So that's going to mean nothing to me. I'm going to go out there and implement my game and do what I do. And break is not a word he should ever associate with me because that's not something I do. I'm a wrestler at heart, 100% wrestler, and I do the breaking. Usman defeats Hassan by arm triangle choke early in round two. My thought process was to go out there and just do what I do and, and focus on the fight. I wasn't worried about the contract or the win or the money or things like that. That's, that was just an added bonus. If I went out there and performed the way that I, I'm capable of performing, I knew everything else would follow suit. And so, you know, that was just my main focus was to go out there and do what I do best. That said, getting the confirmation that you're in the UFC officially, was that a, a huge moment for you? Yeah, that definitely feels better. It feels okay. good. Give me a grade for this season of The Ultimate Fighter. Dana White told me afterwards he's done doing team versus team. Are you surprised by that? And also give me that grade. Not surprised. I think that I think that there was high hopes for this season because there was that, that great rivalry between the two teams, but it just seemed a little flat. And I got to be honest, I really didn't watch a, a good portion of the season. I kind of kind of gave up How on it. How dare you? kind of gave up on it a little bit and I, I, I caught up caught up you know with it again at the end and there were some good fights at the end but yeah I don't know there just wasn't there just wasn't really a big a big buzz and I think it was one of the least successful in terms of ratings you know seasons ever so I, I don't know I think that when we look back though I think that Usman is a guy that that uh, I think one of the guys that you know will we'll look at and say hey this season at least produced someone who could be very good and he didn't have the greatest run on the show but i think that he is a legitimate legitimate prospect at 170. his wrestling is is excellent is fantastic his transition wrestling that we showed that he showed tonight was great and uh he's developed some striking i was talking to rumble johnson about him he said that 
he's he's really doing a nice job on um, his striking too. So I think that at least we can look look to a prospect coming out of that season, which is really kind of a lackluster, you know, season in general. Also on this card, Masvidal makes his welterweight debut for the UFC against former middleweight Cesar Fajera. Masvidal wins by first round knockout and takes home a fifty thousand dollar performance bonus. The difference is huge. Um, I, I felt when I woke up today, uh, when I was doing my sprints, I always do sprints in the morning before the day of the fight. I felt good. I felt explosive. You know, usually uh, I feel like a little lethargic or, or heavy when I when I drop down to 56 and then I put the weight back on. I'm usually around like 78. So just putting all that weight back on, I don't feel good. You know, I felt great today. Obviously, you initially missed weight as well, which is a little surprise since you were moving up. What happened there? And I mean, was that just a miscalculation or what was the issue? Well, one of the UFC guys wanted to run by a uh, steak and shake, I mean, or in and out burger real quick. So I got tempted and whatever, you know. You want to say? So saying, Masvidal, uh, I think he has a chance to take a star turn because he's at 170 now. It's it's a it's a very high profile division. And some of the stuff that he that he said, I mean, he called out Matt Brown. Not a lot of guys call out Matt Brown. And uh, he, he said uh, in, the, in the press conference tonight that he was a little bit overweight because he had some in and out burger. You know, this guy has, has a personality that can really make him into, into a star. He's so honest. He has no filter. He told, uh, he told Sean and I the other day at media day that he had a, he had a couple grand on the, uh, on the McGregor fight and the uh, Robbie Lawler fight. And he ended up winning. This is wow. before the fights. Yeah. And he ended up winning. So was, he won the bonus tonight and he won his bets wow. on, uh, on McGregor and Lawler. So big win for Mazel. I think that's a guy that can be a star, man. I think he's, he's so honest. He's got a great personality. And a welterweight, he may have more more finishing power he may be even more exciting so i think look for him in the future to, to do big things masvidal would then be rewarded with his first ufc main event against ben henderson in seoul south korea masvidal would lose an extremely competitive split decision to the former lightweight champion the bad luck would continue at ufc fight night 88 almeida versus garbrandt where gamebred would lose yet another split decision against top welterweight contender Lorenz Larkin. December 19th, 2015, UFC on Fox 17, Dos Anjos versus Cowboy 2, Orlando, Florida. Usman returns to the cage to face rising UK prospect Leon Edwards. Kamaru Usman wins by decision. I, I, I've said it, you know, I've said it to myself countless times day in and day out. And I'm gonna say it to everyone, you know, before I'm said and done, I will be king of this division one day. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, my performance tonight didn't show it, but when I come back in here next time, it'll be way better, way more dominant, and you can count on seeing finishes from me because one day I will be king of this division. July 23rd, 2016, UFC on Fox 20, home versus Shevchenko, Chicago, Illinois. Kamaru Usman is back in the cage against Russian fighter Alexander Yakovlev. Usman defeats Yakovlev by decision and climbs to eight and one as a professional. I wanted to be, I wanted to go out there and really be exciting and, and get that finish on my feet. But being exciting, you go out there and you get clipped and, and, and you lose a fight, you go home with one check. And so, you know, I want to be exciting, but I come to win every single time. And so winning is the most important thing. If you're losing, you can be the most exciting guy in the world. If you're losing, you're not gonna stick around for very much longer. You know, I can keep winning all the way to the bank and I'm gonna keep winning and racking up those checks and those finish will come. Usman would follow that victory up with another decision victory over Brazilian brawler, Warley Alves at UFC Fight Night 100, Bader versus Nogueira 2 in Sao Paulo. I have stand up, but when you could just dominate guys by not taking any damage, isn't that what we want to do? You want to take a guy down and beat him up and not take any damage. And so when you're capable of doing that and no one was able to stop me from doing that, I kept doing that. But that doesn't mean I don't have stand up. I have very, very good stand up, which I showed in my last fight. At the end of the day, it's, it's you know, I'm not going to be fake. I'm not a fake person who's going to create something just for the cameras. You know, if the promotion is willing to invest, and, re and, and look deep enough into me, they will see that definitely I'm someone who is marketable. I come from humble beginnings. I was a kid from the streets of Nigeria, you know, to where now I'm living a dream that, you know, there's millions of kids that are back home in Nigeria, in, in Cameroon or, or all the African countries, never dream of, you know, we wake up hoping we can get fresh water, walk 15, 10 miles to go get fresh water. You never dream that you're gonna be in a country like this, you know, on a stage like this. 
And so that's something that me and uh, you know a friend of mine, Francis, are, are doing. We're, we're, we're inspiring the masses all over the continent. July 30th, 2016, UFC 201, Lawler versus Woodley, Atlanta, Georgia. Riding a two-fight losing streak for the first time in his career, Masvidal is booked against veteran striker Ross Pearson. Masvidal wins by decision. Are you happy with the result? Obviously you get the W, but did you sort of feel like you needed something emphatic, a uh, finish, something to tell people I that... De I definitely needed a finish. Yeah. I wanted to finish. Uh, I didn't get it. Ross is a tough customer, but um, I'm still improving. I'm, I'm 31 and I've been in this game for a long time, but I'm still young as far as like miles go. If you see my style, I don't get hit often. I, uh, I just got a good style for the sport, you know, so I'm just improving more and, and there's things I still got to tweak, you know. So what makes sense next? Obviously, Pearson wasn't your original opponent. What are you yeah. thinking? Uh, the winner of Jake Ellenberger, Matt Brown, sounds oh. like a treat for the fans. You know, I know everybody would like to see that fight. I know I want an easy payday, so that'd be a great fight for my ass. Masvidal would follow up that victory with a TKO over Jake Ellenberger at the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale, Johnson vs. Elliott. January 28th, 2017, UFC on Fox 23, Shevchenko vs. Pena, Denver, Colorado. Now riding a two-fight win streak at welterweight, Masvidal is set to face fan favorite Cowboy Cerrone. Uh, to me, it's always business. It's never personal. You know, I don't really care for the dude. I don't like him at all. If he dies or becomes a millionaire, it doesn't make me lose sleep. I don't care for him at all, it's, but it's still business to me, you know? So when you see him talking about fighting Damian Maya or calling out Woodley, what does that tell you? Is he looking past you? Oh, I love it. I hope he's looking past me. I hope he didn't run the extra miles. I hope he just thinks that this is a walk in the park. It's better for me. Easy money campaign. In a breakthrough performance, Masvidal steamrolls Cerrone and defeats him by KO one minute into round two. Do you feel like you know, you're kind of in that spot where, you know, you have to start doing crazy things to try to get, you know, more and more opportunities. It's not crazy. It's the way it's a formula. I see Instagram. If you post five pics a day with 30 hashtags, you're going to get up to the 100, 200, 300 K followers, whatever it is that, that they consider you to be popular. That's not me, though. My, my skill is in the gym. I'm in the gym so long. I ain't got time for them corny ass posts. All I got time for is to go to the gym, home, and rest. And while I'm here speaking and all the new medias out here, American top team, the best gym in the world. Why don't we get mentioned? We got three current champions right now. We got guys in the top 10 of every weight division, the greatest fucking team in the world. My boy over here, Gregory Chopling Mutai, KO Zone, what's up? Um, make sure y'all put that in your publications, man. Please, thank you. April 8th, 2017, UFC 210, Cormier versus Johnson 2, Buffalo, New York. Kamaru Usman returns to face the 18-1 Sean Strickland on the prelims. Moving along now, here you see Kamaru Usman. He meets Sean Strickland tomorrow night. They call him the Nigerian Nightmare. Fights, of course, out of Boca Raton, Florida. We met him on The Ultimate Fighter when it was the Black Zillions versus American Top Team. And how much has changed since then? Usman weighing in with the Sox. Classic veteran move. 170.2 for the Nigerian Nightmare, 170.2 for the man wearing the socks. Why get those toes cold? Usman wins by decision. According to Fight Metric, you're the first welterweight since 2007 to win your first five fights in the welterweight division. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I, I don't really keep up with a lot of those stats. I, you know, I just do my job as a fighter, go out there and, and uh, try to rack up the wins and, and entertain fans. Obviously, though, that speaks to your success as of late. Do you feel like now it's time? I mean, you've done a really good job of calling out top dogs. But you haven't gotten that big fight just yet. Do you feel like now you will finally get it? Yeah. Um, you know, as a fighter, you know, and now, you know, I came in as a, you know, I don't do this because there's nothing else for me to do. You know, I do this because I choose to do this. You know, I love the competition. This is another uh, way for me to compete. And, uh, and really show, you know, what, what, what I put into it. You know, I chose this and so I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything into it. And so, you know, when I came in, I want to, of course, I want to be successful. I want to win my fights, you know, but I've started to understand the entertainment aspect of it. You know, these are fans that are paying money to come out there and watch us. And a lot of these fans don't know the intricacy of MMA, don't know the technical aspect to jujitsu or wrestling. You know, a lot of them, you know, kind of want to see a fight. And so you have to entertain and I'm just starting to understand more and more of that. 
And so I want to put on a show more and more for them. But I'm not, of course, I'm not going to forget, you know, my skills that I work on each and every day. Usman would go on to get his first UFC knockout over Sergio Moraes at UFC Fight Night 116, Rockhold versus Branch. Usman would face Emil Mech next at UFC Fight Night 124, Stevens versus Choi in St. Louis, Missouri. Like, let's be honest, you know, look, look at look at the fight. Like, what this? What about Mech, Mech scares me that it's like, oh, don't fight this guy. No, he just, does he have big power? Like, will he? No. Does, can he out wrestle me? No. Can he out grapple me? No. Like, this was a, this was a, oh, just stay busy. Here's a fight because mm -hmm. no one else will fight you here, you know, but you know, it's kind of, he's kind of trying to make it seem like, oh, you're trying to duck me. What, what do I have to duck? I'm asking for harder guys. Why? How is that me ducking? Me? Like, it makes no sense. What do you make of Colby saying no? Um, it, it's it's one of those things that it, it's rough because he he's one of the guys that's been saying, oh, you know, I've been ducking him. Specifically saying I've been ducking him when that fight is never offered, but now the fight's being offered and he's saying, ah, no. Blatantly, three different occasions, he said, no, no, no. You know, so, you know, um, I can't understand why he wouldn't take the fight. I mean, well, in a sense, I can't. He, he thinks he's next in line for a title shot, hmm. which it's clear they're not giving you a title shot. So, <laughs> hey, take the fight. At least prove to the people that you are the best. You are next in line for the shot. But um, Usman wins by decision. That I'm a wrestler. Don't get it wrong. I can stand up and strike. You've seen it just because of my last fight, because I had to do what I had to do to win because I was dealing with some pretty serious injuries. People are forgetting that the fight before, I let a jujitsu expert up. I knocked him down and I let him get back up just so I could knock him out eventually. The fight before that, I fought Sean Strickland, a very, very tough and talented striker. I think his record is like 19 or 20 and one or two. And I still kept him standing and beat him up, shut him down the whole time. The fight before that, I fought a very dangerous Warley Alvarez, kept the fight standing the whole time and beat him up. People, just because of that one performance, people are, are kind of trying to downplay everything that I've accomplished that I can't strike. I can strike with the best of them. May 13th, 2017, UFC 211, Miocic versus Dos Santos 2, Dallas, Texas. Masvidal returns to the cage to face top contender and former title challenger, Damian Maya. Who is the most dodge fighter? Who's the guy that you've called the most and they've said no to or just hung up on, huh? And I'm not just talking about the, the, the fights that got signed and then later on got broken up. I'm talking about backstage, which I won't even mention those hoes' names. But I'm the dude that gets denied the most. Decline, decline, decline every time. Why do you think that is? Because I can fight, man, and I'm mean, and I'm good everywhere. You're not, there's, you don't look at me fighting and go, oh, man, but if I do this, then I'll have an upper hand. No, because I'm good everywhere. So it's going to be a fight no matter what. It's going to be a testament of my will versus somebody else's will every time. And I got more will than everybody. All I'm saying is I'm, I'm here to fight, man. And Damien is by far the number one contender. They wanted to make Cowboy also fight after my fight for the title. Well, I, I, I took care of that guy twice in one night. Yeah. If I could get by Maya and I'm not fighting for the title, there's... I, I, I'm speechless, you know? The, the sport's gone in another direction and, and not what I signed up for. When I, when I got into fighting, it was before Ultimate Fight. I already had pro fights. It was guys that were fighting, no time limit, just wanting to be the best in the world. And it didn't matter about fame. And it's awesome that we get money and stuff, but those guys didn't care about fame and money. And that's why I got into it. Obviously, I want to get paid as much as I can, but I don't care about the fame and stuff like that. But the sport has gone in that direction. That's not me, man. I'm, I'm here to just fight. And if I get famous off my fighting, awesome. If not, whatever, you know? Well, this is good because I thought that you were going to rip on the media and all that, but it seems like you actually start to like the media now. No, I, I still can't stand you, more. Why? But uh, why? Because it's how long I've been doing this. And now people are like, man, this guy's awesome, this and that. I didn't just wake up and get good. I've been, good been covering for you for a long time. I remember you're in Dallas, you you fought in Strike Force here. Remember, yeah, you're, but you're, but you're my partner. And that's why I always I never I never not do interviews with you because you're my boy. Though I don't like to do this, I'm I'm re look when you're I, great at it. When I come into a room and there's a bunch of people, I don't like it, man. I'm antisocial. I grew up a little different where you just don't talk to random sure. people and stuff because they might try to rob you or something. So I'm not really used to it. Still, I think you're good here with these folks. Yeah, I, I think I'm good, you know. But I'm still not used to people just coming up sure. to me in the street and talking yeah, yeah. to me. Kind of throws me off. So I. 
talking to the media, especially the fake media, feels like, man, I'm getting these guys money. I'm not getting no money off of it because for years they didn't do shit for my career. Sure. You know, who the hell was covering me? Nobody. When I wouldn't put on an amazing performance at Strike Force, like you just said, beating KJ yeah. News, didn't nobody give a fuck about that, you know? So why now they're all on me? Because I beat Cowboy? Who the fuck is Cowboy? You know what I'm saying? He's a good fighter, but who the fuck is he? I beat other guys like him or better. Now all of a sudden, everybody wants to be my best friend. Everybody wants to text me. Oh, let me get an interview with you. Man, after this fight, if you want my boy from the gate, I'm gonna start charging for these interviews because they're doing them clickbaits and they're getting all that money. I need money. My, let me wet my beat. Give me $100 from now and you want an interview with me? Put some money in my hands after this fight because I'm not getting nobody else paid. I need to put my kids through college. You know what I'm saying? So I, I have a lot of discontent with the media. You know, even after the Cowboy fight, they didn't say how good a performance I did. They said Cowboy shouldn't have took that fight because it was too early. Cowboy should have not fought a guy like me that wasn't even ranked. Cowboy looked flat, but they forgot that uh, right before Cowboy had that fight, I fought two weeks before against Jake Ellenberger, the guy that destroyed the guy. Yeah. That almost uh, that, that him and him had a little war with. You know what I'm saying? People forget that shit, and that shit bothers me, man. You know, I'm here to fight and to fight the world's best. That's it. Maya wins by split decision, snapping Masvidal's three-fight winning streak. November fourth, 2017, UFC 217, Bisping versus Saint Pierre, New York, New York. Masvidal returns to action on the pay-per-view main card against top contender Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. But the goal is beat Wonderboy on Saturday, and then you're the number one contender. No, look, look I can't just beat him because they'll rob me of a decision. I got to murder him. So the goal is murder him, move on to the title, and then whatever happens, happens, you know? What do you mean by murder him? Murder him, like, make sure he leaves in the stretcher because I'm not winning a decision in New York okay. against him, yeah. you know? So I got to make sure that he can't walk out of there in one piece, you know? Masvidal loses back-to-back -back fights at welterweight as Wonderboy wins the decision. May 19th, 2018, UFC Fight Night 129, Maya versus Usman Santiago Chile. Riding a seven-fight win streak in the UFC, Kamaru Usman is booked in his first main event opposite top-ranked grappler Demian Maya. Usman wins the five-round fight by decision. Uh, I might not be the best striker. I might not be the best jiu-jitsu guy. I might not be the best wrestler. But when you put it all together, I'm a bad motherfucker to deal with. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a bad motherfucker to deal with. I don't care. Somebody might hit harder than me. Somebody might, you know, grapple better than me or, or, or have better jujitsu. But when you mix it all together, mixed martial arts, I am a bad motherfucker to deal with. And that's, I, I've been quiet for too long. And some people might say, oh, we're just cocky or no, I'm not cocky. I'm confident in my abilities because mm -hmm. I know I've put the time in to build that skill. March 2nd, 2019, UFC 235, Jones versus Smith, Las Vegas, Nevada. Kamar Usman is booked against the champion Tyron Woodley as the co-main event for UFC 235. From your perspective, how, how did this finally come together for you against Woodley? Um, if you guys realize, if you guys notice, I've, I've said this. I, I put out a battle yeah. agreement a long time ago. I've said this fight. It was real. Yeah, this was real. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't joking. I said this fight was going to happen. You know, it, it was kind of one of those situations where this fight, their fight should have been happened. You know, Kobe should have been fought. He should have already fought Tyron with me a while ago. Took his ass whooping there. But, you know, unfortunately, these guys kept playing games. No, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm ready. I'm not ready. So, you know, with all those games, it, this time's not gonna wait for you guys. Everything keeps rolling. This is a well-oiled machine. It keeps on going. And so these guys kept playing games and I'm right there like, hey, I'm ready. And so the company said, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna go with the guy that is ready. And not just that, I mean, uh, it's a, it's a, it's time for you to, to see the new champion. It's time for you to, you know, it's not just, I don't just come, you know, like everyone, everyone else. I come not with just with a country, I come with a continent. And it's time for us to expose this sport to that continent. And when we do, I mean, you only have five, maybe five Africans right now in the UFC. Imagine when we expose that continent to this sport. I mean, this sport is just gonna blow up so so, so big and so amazingly that to where, I, I believe the company is like, you know what? It's time for us to, to take a chance and, and open this up. So, which is why I'm here today. I am backing up. You hit me, I'm still coming. And I'm coming all night long, T. Wood. Please don't brother, back up. Brother. Don't back up, brother. my man. Don't back brother. up. Bruh. Marty, you love hey. your mentor. Hey, 
Hey, listen. You, talk, you talking back to your mentor right now. <laughs> when you hear and new, you know, you're going to feel real special when you're walking backstage. You don't even believe that yourself. Like it, it's, you want to be so cool. You want to sound like LL Cool J. You don't even believe it yourself. I don't believe it. You don't even believe hey, it yourself. You believe it though. Hey, you believe it. You've been a good champion. Oh my god. You've been a good champion. Yeah, team. Ella, here come LL Cool J. You've been a good LL champion. Team. Thank you, team. You know You've been a good champion. You. Let me get my lip. Let me get my chest. You've been a good champion. You know what? This you know is one thing. This you. is one thing I want to tell everybody. You've been a good champion. You know what? Who was that? What? Oh, who was Who? That? What? Who was that? You, you, huh? I'm going to tell you, you've been a good I want champ. You gonna, I want you to tell me how you're going to do champ. it, though. I want, that's what I want you to provide me. All right, the, let, let's get path. another question, you two. Let's get another question. And it looked like a bum on the street that bought one of those little, you know, little replica belts. And because he had the what, what, some hat on too, some little trucker hat. I was like, oh, is that a bum? And I had to look closer and saw I saw it. There's a reason it's roped off and you're outside the ropes. You could have been inside. You're outside. So stay on the outside and keep making noise. That's all. I don't really care about that. You feel like it was over the line for him to come try to maybe steal your spotlight a little? No. No. That's what you expect for guys like that. You know? I don't care. If, uh, you know, after I'm done with Tyron Woodley, if he plays his cards right, he has to beg me now. Because five times I've been offered that fight. I've accepted all five. He's declined all five. All you guys know that. He's declined it. So he has to beg me for that fight. Home main event, Tyron Woodley versus Kamaru Usman. Apparently the next contender for your interim interim title here. Yeah, yeah. Most likely uh, Tyquil Woodley is going to knock out Snoozman, but it could be a boar fest. So... You know, I had to come out here and, and please the fans because they might be uh, disappointed tomorrow night. Obviously, Colby, you wanted to meet your your, your presence work, belt work, this work, week. You came to the open workouts, so of course you had a little shot with Dana champ. White. The real champ. The real champ. Why? Why did you do this this week? Why did I do this? Because the UFC promised that the real welterweight champ would be here this weekend. So I'm here as the real welterweight champ. This is the number one contendership fight this weekend. That's all it is. So you, so you came in to, to make sure that your your voice was heard, that your presence was, was, was felt a little bit? Dude, I'm the people's champ. I came among the people. There ain't none of these none of these other fighters are coming out here hanging out with the people. I'm the people's champ, man. I'm I'm putting it on the line for all these people. And someone's gotta entertain them, man. All these freaking clowns in here, they they're boring, man. They're supposed to put their opponents to sleep. They're putting the fans to sleep. Usman defeats Woodley by decision and becomes the new UFC welterweight champion. Our Usman with the performance of his career. Not only beating Tyron Woodley, completely dominating him. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. He really controlled yeah. him in every facet of the game, won every round, won at least one round 10-8, yeah. if not if not multiple rounds 10-8. What is your take on, on this uh, really magnificent performance put on by Usman? I feel like we all slept on him a little bit. I mean, I think everybody I talked to was like, hey, he's a, li he's a live dog. I think I don't think people would have been shocked if he won the fight, but to dominate it from yeah. horn to horn for 25 minutes and really just dictate the whole fight where it took place uh, even in a couple of the exchanges i thought he's he got the better of woodley on those rare occasions where they broke out a little bit um i don't know what to say man i i wouldn't have guessed in a million years that he would dominate the fight like that where he's just a suffocating woodley closing in using the clinch putting him against the fence just making a grimy affair where i felt like woodley just i felt like he came off his moorings early in that fight and he just never knew how to recover i don't i, I felt like he just kind of kept his guns holstered because he didn't, he was just one of those big fight moments where he just didn't know what to do. Um, but hats off to Usman, man, because he, uh, I, that was the performance of his career. He didn't get the finish. Like, I thought, like, if he was going to win, maybe that would be the way to get him over. But I think he was so dominant. And they had the, the you know, the next challenger, obviously, right there mm -hmm. in the in the front row. And we will get to what yeah. I'm trying to call so, in a minute. But just given all those factors, I feel like um, 
he did enough to kind of to, to set up his next fight and make him more uh, formidable in that fight. My, nothing but respect for Tyron. I, I, I've, I respect that man. I remember when he won the title, I was at his after party. And uh, me and Rashad, Rashad brought me in and I, and I got a chance to sit up there next to him. And we sat down, he was just chilling. And we sat, and I sat next to him and I whispered in his ear and I asked him and I said, hey, how do you feel now that you're champion? What's the difference? And he told me, he said, you know, nothing really. You know, I still feel the same. And at that moment I said, you know what? I think I can do this. I can do it. I mean, Rashad has been pouring into me the whole time, telling me that I, I will be able to do this. And, you know, you, you say it. I said that, you know what? I'm coming for that welterweight strap, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. You know, I'm a math guy. Okay, that's the answer. This is the formula. Now we got to work out the problems in order to be able to get there. And, you know, tonight was my night. I'm sure you saw Colby Covington cage side. I mean... Is that the right fight for you? Can I, I curse like up rematch. Here? What's that? Can I curse up here? Of course you can. I want to fuck that guy up so bad. It, it, I can't be in a room with that guy. I can't. I can't be in a room with him. It's like, I, I just can't. And, um, you know, I, I can't wait to be healed up and, and, and really get to put my hands on him. You know what? That That's, that's one I'm going to enjoy brutalizing him. We all know Kobe has uh, avoided this fight for a long, long time. And you know what? Now it's time for you to do the appropriate work to make sure you deserve this fight because that's that's what he does. That's what he thrives on. He thinks that he's deserving of everything. He always puts it out there. Oh, I deserve this. This is what you owe me. This is what you owe. No, no, it's not about that. You know, now it's 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 you're not you're not in the driver's seat to make that decision. It's for the promotion. And it's for my team that are in that position to make that decision. Well, what, uh, what happened at the Palms? The Palms, it was just, you know, it's just one of those things. I've said it before. You can't put me in a room with that guy and expect something not to, not to pop off. I mean, it, it was just one of those situations to where, and you saw that all week. He was there all week to try to distract me, disrupt me. And, and he said, and you, you guys heard the chance the whole week. Oh, hey, Actually, I think at my open workout, the one thing that I did hear from him while he was speaking through that whatever megaphone, whatever that, you know, he was saying, oh, how does it feel to know that you're gonna get knocked out tomorrow by Tyron Willie? How does it feel you know that you're gonna get knocked out? So the whole time, he's trying to, to speak these things out as if I'm already, I'm already gonna lose. But listen, you showed your true colors. You were worried about me. Did you see him at the uh, Woodley's open workout? You didn't crash his open workout and do that. You crashed mine because you were worried about me getting that belt. You've avoided a fight with me for a long, long time. You knew that you didn't want this fight, but now I'm in a position to where you can't run from that fight anymore. Now you have to, as I've said, you have to beg me for that fight. I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, my my whole base is, is I, I, you know, I'm an, I'm an immigrant, you know? Obviously my family immigrated here for, for to give us the best possible opportunities in life which is why a lot of immigrants immigrate here. And that kind of plays on the dynamic uh, uh, of this other guy who wants to fight me now is, is this guy feels very entitled. As you see him all the time, and especially now his whole rant, Dana, you promised me this. Dana, I deserve this. Why'd you give me this interim belt if, if I wasn't going to be next? And that's just kind of his mentality, how he's going about situations. now. That's not who I am. Uh, we immigrated here to give me that opportunity, but I had to take that opportunity. I had to put my heart and soul into what I was going to do in order to be at the pinnacle of it. And so I've put the hard work in, which is why I'm in the position that I am in now. And this guy, I feel like is trying to divide us, He's trying to divide all humans. Oh, you guys are immigrants. You don't deserve this or you don't deserve that. Oh, I deserve it before you. It doesn't work like that. When you put the hard work in, you see the results. And I think that's what, if that fight does come to fruition, that's what that fight is going to symbolize. March 16th, 2019, UFC on ESPN Plus 5, Till versus Mosfidal, London, England. Despite writing a two-fight losing streak, Mosfidal is booked against fellow top contender and recent title challenger, Darren Till. Um, my experience though, my fighting style, and 
my perseverance mixed with, with the game that I have that I, I'm just a dog. I'm not going to quit. He's never seen nothing like me in his life. I guarantee you. After Saturday, he'll write a book on, on, on what he learned from me, you know? I think of Ben Askren coming over here. He seems to think he's automatically getting the winner of this fight. I know Leon Edwards and uh, Gunnar Nelson also uh, have said they think they're going to get the winner of this fight. Um, but in Ben Askren in particular, do you think that's a bad idea for him based on how he got on against predominantly a striker and Robbie Lawler in his first outing, coming in against you or, or Till, depending on who the winner is? For one, we won't even mention no more names on my interview of these guys because we just gave them a whole lot of press, bro. Nobody even knew those bums before you mentioned them right now, you know? And that's something that the media and, and like the fans, like if you just talk, you know, I mentioned this in a couple of interviews. If I start talking bad about Donald Trump, my president, they're not gonna go to an interview of him and be like, hey, this guy Jorge Masvidal's talking junk about, no, it's not gonna happen, you know? Why it happens in MMA, I, I don't know, you know? We got number 37 of the world calling me out and number whatever the fuck calling me out. Meanwhile, I'm fighting number three, you know? And my ranking has dropped because I've been inactive for a while. But I'm fighting the hardest, best fight that I could get out. Why do I care about anybody else? And they constantly get brought up in other interviews, you know? Ben could say and do whatever the fuck he wants. He's a punk. Robbie didn't go to sleep. So I get it in the moment you get caught up, my hands are up in the air, I won. You see the replay as a man. You see the replay and you see that he has a thumbs up. I never seen somebody sleeping like that. I would say, let's do it again. I'm gonna fuck you up without a doubt, show it to the world. But he's a weasel, he's a punk here already. Before they even brought that up, he said, no, not a chance, not doing it. Why? Why? Because you're not a fucking man. You're a punk and the bitch in you will be brought out. Am I fighting him after this fight? No, because I'm fighting for the title, but I will break his face at some point. I don't know if it'll be in a parking lot. I don't know if it'll be at a gym. I don't know if it'll be in the octagon. But that guy ever gets fresh with me in person, that's, that's right then and right there, you know? Plus, I don't like his corny ass, you know? And, and I remember said that you brought him up and all interviewers, stop asking me about Ben and the other dude from England. Don't give a fuck. All interviews, please listen. Because the next guy that does is just going to get shooed away. I don't want to hear about these bums in my interview, you know? Jorge Masvidal crushes Till by knockout midway through the second round. July 6, 2019, UFC 239 Jones versus Santos, Las Vegas, Nevada. Gamebred is set to face the undefeated Ben Askren. What round and how are you going to do it? We're going to do it painfully and brutally. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I don't like this dude, as everybody can know. So it's going to be brutal, man. It's going to be it's going to be painful, man. I don't know what round yet, but it's going to be painful. Will this be Dare Until Part Two, or how are you preparing for this, brother? Nah, this is different, man. Darren Till woke up eventually. I, I don't know if Buddy's gonna wake up. Yeah, you're the, hey, you're the man, Jorge. You're the man, you got this, brother. You know this guy's gonna try to grab you and hug you up the whole fight, right? He's gonna try to put his face in so my you, crotch, yes. So I, what I'm wondering is, are you feeling a little knee on the way in? Are we gonna go with an uppercut? Are we gonna go with a flying knee? What are you feeling? We got, we got, a, we got something that's not usually listed on the menu when you pull up to the drive-thru. It's gonna be, uh, it's on the special files for his ass, man. He's gonna find out July 6th, though. I've never in all my pro fights had more fans come up to me and request the ending of somebody. Never, ever, ne never. It's always like, yeah, fuck that guy. But I've never had specific demands like, can you sink in his eye orbital so he can no longer see from that side? And I've jotted down all of them and I've said, I'm. You, I'm putting it out in the universe. I'm gonna try to make your wishes come true. You know? So I've never had so much animosity towards a fighter that I've ever fought in my whole fucking career, man. From the fans, you know? I mean, even yesterday when I was done at the open workouts, some lady had drawn a picture of him, showed it to me, threw it on the phone, started stepping on him. This is what I want you to do to his face. I was Seriously? like, yeah, yeah, I swear my coaches were there. Maybe the UFC and better picked it up, you know? But it was pretty fucking entertaining, man. He's a master, I'll tell you what, he's a master of stuffing his face in men's crotches. Grandmaster. That, I can't take that away from him. I've never seen nobody do that at that level. How do you incorporate that into a training? It's uh, it's weird, man, because I'm not into dudes having their face in my crotch, bro. It's not something I've grown to like, you know, so uh, there's a lot of defenses for that, you know, and I've been working on each and every one of them. In quite possibly the most spectacular knockout in UFC history, Masvidal removes Askren from consciousness with a flying knee at five seconds in the very first round. I saw some criticism. People say the punches weren't really necessary. Maybe they were super necessary. 
Why were they necessary? What do you mean, why were they not necessary? Because he was already knocked out at that point. But it, the referee hadn't pulled me off. And my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off. So to those people, I would say, maybe don't watch him and may go back to soccer. I saw some other criticisms, perhaps, of your celebration afterwards. Any regrets at the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? Uh, man, there's not too many people that I've disliked. I have over 50 pro fights, and he's one of them, you know. He talked about my manhood, talked about my culture, my ethnicity. Where, where do we draw? Why do certain people get to do stuff? You online, so you could do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want. Like other fighters are not doing, talking about people's religions, wife, even kids. That's cool. But after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face. So you and guys like you could see it and be like, maybe I don't talk so much shit because when I cross one of these real motherfuckers, they're gonna make me pay for it, man. They're gonna embarrass the shit out of me. And it's not over for Ben either. He still has to deal with me. If I see my whole foods, I'm gonna still slap that dude up because I don't like him. He got the head buster with the uh, no longer with us clavicle. He got, a, he got all types of shit. Then he got those uh, punches to the face, you know, because I, I thought he was gonna get up. <laughs> that maybe one day you guys could drop the beef or do you think it's is, is this a permanent thing oh no it, it's not beef because if it was beef it'd be different i'd be at the front of his house waiting for him right now it's not beef this is just i don't like some my co-worker we could say but this is not beef you know this is just some idiot i don't like you know but my job thank god i'm you guys got to be jealous of, of this for me i get to punch the co-workers i don't like in the face <laughs> november 2nd 2019, UFC 244, Masvidal versus Diaz, New York, New York. The baddest motherfucker in the game, Nathan Diaz, puts a personal title on the line against Jorge Gamebred Masvidal as the main event at Madison Square Garden. Can you just talk about preparing to this fight and how your mental state differs as opposed to fighting a big trash talker like Askren or McGregor? Yeah, I heard him. Um, I mean, when people talk shit, it is motivating because there's some dudes you're not going to lose to. And Askren is that dude I'm not losing on any universe to, you know? So the, the shit talking does help. Um, but, uh, man, it's just it just helps when, when the guy on the other side that you're fighting wants to hurt you and you know it. That's enough motivation for me right there. Yeah, it's just like I train for every fight. There's really not a lot of trash going on and a lot of fight time in anyway, so it's just like normal. Uh, I'm just glad to have a worthy opponent and I work where I need to be in. So, you know, when, when Nate did his interview that night, he, he basically said, this is for the baddest motherfucker in the game. So... He was defending the baddest motherfucker in the game. So, you know, this is one of those fights that after that interview, you know, started to build a life of its own through the fans and the media. And uh, we, we didn't seriously start talking about this fight till maybe a couple weeks later in, 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 in a matchmaking meeting. And I said to my guys, listen, Tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a baddest motherfucker in the game belt? And my guys loved it, and we started talking about it, so I went in with the design team at UFC. Right. We started to design it, and uh, I will physically have that belt when I come back to New York. It'll be ready. Oh, it definitely has a special place. Not, not because it's an MSG, not just because the BMF title, not because so many other surrounding factors make this event one of the biggest events of UFC history. It's just because of the guy that I'm fighting. If I was fighting him in the parking lot, if I was fighting him in his backyard, man, it's just, it's, to me, it's always the, the fighter, the guy that I got across that makes my moment. It's like, yes, you know, and it's it's not from a disrespectful place or nothing, but it's like a, like a chess player that wouldn't want to play chess with somebody like me because I'm a novice, would want to challenge himself and play the best player of all time. It's the same thing. I want to fight the greatest guys of my generation and uh, hurt him. I gotta be cautious always, you know. I that that's one of his strong points is being off his back landing submissions. Um, but then again I come from the world's best gym and I firmly believe that I've been saying that for years. We got animals over there. 
on the regular, guys that nobody's ever heard of that are just insane off their back. So I'm not too worried about me getting in trouble if I'm on top of them, especially if the strikes are loud. Is the strikes and elbows allowed in this one? Yes. Yeah? Okay, I'll be all right. <laughs> Jorge Masvidal wins via TKO at the end of the third round when the cage side doctor stops the fight due to cuts over Nate Diaz's eyes. If the fight wasn't going to get stopped, what was going to be your game plan for the fourth and fifth round? <clears throat> well, I felt... I swear to God, I initially was like, man, I hope I uh, haven't been running because my confidence wasn't as high as, as, high as it is because I'm running and I'm putting these miles that people can't keep up with, except for Jose and Allen. <laughs> but uh, but uh, when I'm like that, I could go 95% for the whole, the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this time there was like little bump ups, little bumps up bump up so how hard how hard I was gonna have like, tell myself okay he's up he's up he's up he's up and uh and I was like around around the third round I've started to feel him start grabbing onto me on the on the fence you could see he was like holding me on the fence one time and I was like this fool's gonna go for a takedown or something or start drilling me with these knees and he wasn't doing anything I was like oh okay you're just preserving so I started smacking him in his face this way like that, and his head turned to the side. I started smacking him in his face this way. Not even te technical fighting. School yeah, like, oh, you're gonna just hold me? I'm just gonna smack you in your face as many times. So, uh, and on the bottom, and I, I was hearing him, I was like, where you at, motherfucker? And then he, he spit it, spit it back. Oh, I'm right here. I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I hear you starting to fade away. I think it's gonna start getting better for me. And then I go back to my corner, and I'm telling my corner over here, they're talking to me. I'm like, Ken, let's calm down a little bit. Cause I always get a ruckus out of the corner cause I bleed everywhere. And uh, so so I'm like, hey, let's just chill so I can breathe. And uh, I'm looking over here, I'm like, yeah, I think this guy's easing up. I think if it's gonna get better for me, it's gonna start getting better for me right now. And then the guy's like, oh, I'm like, no, we good. We good, and he's like, okay, okay, we're good. And he goes over and he stops the fight. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? That hey. pisses me off, you know what I'm saying? It makes me really mad. One more. As far as uh, painting my Picasso, I almost got to do it, you know. Um, I heard a lot of comments. I read a lot of media stuff, people talking about when it, the later the fight goes or if the fight hits the ground or in certain situations, I'd be outworked and outclassed. Not happening. I, I want somebody to pull up a fight that I that I've faded in the fourth or fifth round. That's not going to happen. What happened in the third was just going to keep happening in the fourth and in the fifth. I haven't eaten either, so I was ready to fuck him up. Keep going, man. Nate's a fucking dog, though. There's those same shots I've hit a lot of people. I pulled them like a long chair. You literally got to kill that dude. I said in every every leading up to this, I mean, wasn't lying, man. You got to kill that dude. I'm the most competitive person this whole fucking company's ever seen, man. I don't want no, nothing to take my greatness to say some guy tripped on the pebble and that's how I beat him. That's not me. I want to end him. I want to send him off to another dimension. I got nothing but respect for the dude, but that's the type of artwork I like to do. I didn't get it on this one. Are we going to rematch tomorrow, next week? I don't know, but it will happen at some point, you know. Conor McGregor says that he is going to come back January 18th. On Dana come, White said, come back to what? To MMA, to the UFC. What do you mean, like fighting in the cage? Yeah. I don't know, man. That dude's been talking wild for a what second. If he fights and gets a victory, and he wants this, and some of you motherfuckers are mean, man, because you know what the fuck I'll do to that little dude, bro. I'll fuck that little guy up, man. He's a fucking midget. Dana White, president of this motherfucking company, said I'm too much man for him. I get it why people want to see him hurt for the stunts he's been pulling, but he don't want this shit. He's just talking so you get his name out there. He was he was cheering for Nate. He wanted to run it back with Nate. You think he's at home seeing that fight saying, I want to fight that dude? That dude ain't retarded. You see, he punches old people in the face because those are fights that he could win. He don't want this shit. Thank you guys, man. Good questions today, man. You guys keep it up. Step it up. I like this. Stepping it up. December 14th, 2019. UFC 245. Usman versus Covington. Las Vegas, Nevada. Nobody cares about you. Don't Gas out in three rounds. Listen, Gas out. Bottom line is everybody, everybody knows you're everybody on thought my last fight was going to be dollars If you can pee in a cup right now and it, and it, and it passes. Put your I'll money up. I will. I'll put Where's it up right now. Bring it out. Pull I'll it up. Put it up right now. Twenty-five grand. Is the money sitting in your right private now. chat? It actually it is, buddy. 
Uh, what do you make of this insinuation from Colby that, you know, you're on steroids, you can't, you know, piss in a cup clean, all that stuff? They all say that, you know, with the way I'm beating guys, they all say that, but it is what it is. December 14th, there will be a beheading and everyone will see it and watch it live. That's not a very good explanation, buddy. You sound like you're stuttering over there. You okay? Everybody knows uh, the Black Zillions team is notorious for doing steroids. You know, Anthony Johnson, Rashad Evans, all, all the guys over there. I'll start over him when he was over there. You know, I, I have inside information that, you know, he was doing EPO for a couple years and and that's just that, that's a fact, you know, he, he has no good response. He can't even defend himself. So I think it's pretty clear he's on steroids, but it's not gonna make a difference because when I get my hands on him, he will melt. Kamaru Usman will defend his Walter Waite title for the first time against Colby Covington as the main event for UFC 245 in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> In one of the most exciting fights of the year, Usman finishes Covington by TKO in round five and retains his UFC championship. I'm gonna be honest, uh, this was what kept me sane all six, seven months, whenever this fight, I knew this fight was gonna happen. This is what kept me sane is this moment right here after the fight. That's what I look forward to. This is the addictive moment. This is what keeps me doing this. Um, yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot emotionally, uh, a lot that he said. Um, this one, like, and I meant it. This one's for the world. This one's for the people of Brazil. This one is for my former manager. This one is for my family. This one's for my man and my recent manager. This one is for everybody. And um, you know, when you push hate and you push separation, you know, love and unity does win sometimes. And tonight it won. Where's his gas tank at? Everybody's talking about this gas tank. Where is this guy? I was actually waiting for him to wrestle, but I knew that he knew if he wrestled with me, he was going to gas out and I was going to knock him out a lot quicker than that. Tyron Woodley has better accolades wrestling than he does. And you saw what happened in that fight. He knew he couldn't wrestle with me and striking with me. And that was his best chance. And, you know, we saw what happened there. And then the last thing for me, uh, probably was trying to the USA and it seemed like it was it was for him. You're an American citizen. You've been here for a It's long. for me too. What you talking about? It was, it was Chan USA for me. Let's be honest. I've said it time and time again. I'm more American than him. You know, I am what it means to be an American. You know, I'm an immigrant that come here and work my ass off tirelessly to get to the top. And I'm still prevailing. And so that's what it means to be an American. It's not necessarily, oh, just because you're born here, you feel privileged is what it means to be an American. No. I told him none of these guys work harder than me. That's what it means to be an American. I work my ass off and I'm going to continue to work my ass off. And, and, and obviously with good integrity, I don't have to walk around like a punk and say certain things and, and abuse the whole country, and abuse the whole world and, and talk about people and, 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 and religions and things like that. I don't have to, you know, I'm going to walk with integrity because at the end of the day, I want everyone that's watching me, every eye that's on me to look at me and say, you know what? That's what we want to be. That's the example that we like. And so, you know, I'm more American than him. So when they were chanting USA, that was you damn sure better believe that was because of me. July 11th, 2020, UFC 251, Usman versus Masvidal, Yaz Island, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Originally booked as Kamaru Usman defending his welterweight title against Gilbert Burns, Burns was removed from the bout after testing positive for COVID-19, and Masvidal was brought in at the 11th hour. Kamaru Usman now faces Jorge Masvidal as the main event at UFC 251. Well, listen, I'm sure you know that uh, after you today, we'll be speaking with Kamaru Usman. Uh, Who? <laughs> UFC welterweight champion. Uh, Listen, I spoke to Dana yesterday, and he said he thinks that's the fight right now to make it 170 pounds is you two guys for the for the belt. What do you think about that? Do you feel like that's the right next move for you at this time? I, I won't say it's not the right move. It's Usman's a fight. Connor's obviously flirted with the idea of fighting me. And if, and if me and Connor go in the, in the octagon, what happens? It's one of the biggest fights in history. You know, just by math, proving what, what connor has been doing. The last couple of fights that I've had, the engagement, the pay-per-views, I broke records with ESPN. So obviously it's a formula for success, you know. Somebody will always have the belt at 170 pounds. So it, it doesn't really matter if it's Kamaru or not. 
Connor's a bigger fight. Now, if Connor doesn't do his job or Connor doesn't want to fight after his fight, then we're, we're going to take Usman's head off. So in an ideal world, if Connor wins on Saturday night, you'd prefer that fight over Usman for the belt? Yes, for a fact. We, we'd smash up uh, Connor and then go embarrass his actor of Usman. But if you're asking me from a technical standpoint, we're not in the same playing field when it comes to stand up and he knows it. That that man can never look me in the eyes and say, I, I would stand with you. He's gonna immediately magnetize on my crotch and, and do what he does, you know? Avoid the fight at all costs, but we're ready for that. How important is the title to you, the, the actual welterweight championship? It's definitely important because it, it says that you are the best. I, I don't believe it some of the times. A lot of the times it's just promotional stunts. In this case, it being, you know, I'm, I'm going to prove it. I know there's the whole world saying that Usman will this or that. And me, myself, and I saying, no, nah, I, I, he's not the champ. I'm I'm the champ, and I'm going to prove it when we get in there, you know. There's a reason why he doesn't want to fight me. And he says he wants to fight a guy that's ranked under me that he already beat. He says it's a tougher fight. Does, and how many stoppages does that individual that he's talking about have in his whole record compared to mine? You know, you guys ain't idiots, neither is the public. Usman can try to sell whatever he wants to the public, but people ain't stupid, man. You're a fucking idiot if anybody's going to believe this shit. You're saying you already beat that guy and he's ranked under me. How is he a tougher fight than me? Explain what what do you consider a tougher fight? Me breaking your face or you possibly beating him? That That's what uh what I guess he's thinking, man. As he knows his time is up. And another thing I'll, I'll say while all the press is here, Usman's coaches, they were in his corner for his last fight. Sparring partners, all that stuff is my graduating class from American Top Team. I think a lot of you might have known the Black Zillions. They're no longer with us, but they were a part of ATT. They used to be with us. So a lot of those coaches that he has in his corner right now are the same dudes that are telling him, don't fight that guy, bro. He's going to fuck you up, man. We know who that guy is. You know who you are. Fake the injury when the time comes because this one's not going your way. And that's that's really the main reason why he doesn't like to address me because he knows, man, this shit is for real. Usman, I can't stand him, man. I can't stand that dude. I'll be honest with you, so I'll pick Usman all day. But it's business, right? Always, especially for me. So I'd pick Khan in the real life. But if it's all the same potatoes and tomatoes, I will break his fucking face, man, and in a violent way. It just And it's just, I, I, I don't like how he's been playing. At first, I, I came at him with a lot of respect. And uh, now he's been talking too much shit, bro. And I just want to shut his mouth up. That's it, you know? If you fought Masvidal and he comes with a flying knee like Ben Askren, you have anything in store for him? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm not Ben Askren. And so, um, you know, I just take the fight how they come. If that fight does happen, then, you know, I'll go in there and do my job, which is dominate an opponent from start to finish, you know, maybe get another broken jaw. Who knows? Thank you, champ. Thank you. This is a game to kind of where you, you need to fight the contenders that are there. And um, if you look right now, what what... If, if this is just an average guy that's that's looking into the sport of martial arts and they're like, oh, the welterweight champion is gonna fight somebody, who is that contender? And they look through the rankings and they, they wanna know who that the next best guy is. And if you look in that top 10, I've beat half of them. I've gone through half of them in the top half of them. You know, who in that top 10 has this guy beat? You know, to me, um, is this is this being a contender or is this the hype? You know, there's two different things. Of course, when there's a lot of hype, people want to see the fight. Of course, they make the fight happen. But when it's, you know, a true contender that, that has been running through the division, beating all the worthy guys to get there, of course, I'll be happy to take on that because I know that's the next toughest, best challenge. That's all that is. What would he have to do to sort of get on your radar and I guess prove himself in your mind to be the next worthy contender? Who? Jorge Masvidal. Oh, okay. Uh, uh. Just last one from me, you know, I know you're the welterweight champion, so obviously that means a, a great deal to you, but would it mean to you anything to sort of, uh, if you fought Jorge, to fight for the BMF title and sort of, you know, add that to your collection? <laughs> Who and what? <laughs> well, the, the, I, I'm not interested in the best mediocre fighter title. I'm, I'm not I'm not interested in that. that this is gold. Like, um, you know, when I got into sports, I, I, I always shot for the best, you know, and, and last time I checked, the prices on, on silver wasn't continuously going up. The prices on gold is going up. So, you know, I always wanted the gold, not silver. So I got the gold and that's all matters to me.